Hello, my friends. Welcome to this Together Run. We are in Toronto. I'm first time in Canada. Um, I want to take you on a run, but I want you to first find some element of nature to connect yourself to, to ground yourself to. I'm going to find a random tree, this little survivor in a big city. And are you ready to begin? Oh, my watch has gone off the thing. I'm just going to give it a second to come back. It's when you're taking too long. <laughs> um, are this feeling right? Ready? Okay. Three, two, and one, off we go. Guess what? I got cleared yesterday to run an hour. This is gonna be the first hour run I've done. So I'm excited that you're gonna be joining me. And we're gonna go explore Canada or Toronto, because I have literally no idea where I am. I'm, I know that I am gonna head towards Mount Bay Road. Uh, yes, this is Bay, Bay Street. So we're going to head down here, down to the waterfront. And we're going to go run along the waterfront together. So it's quite cold. Well, it feels cold compared to what I've been having. It's probably um, 30, it's probably low 40s um, in Fahrenheit. And so it feels a little chilly. I've got two long sleeves on, which I may regret. But I figured I'd rather be warm than chattering to you. And so this bit is going to be a bit busy and stoppy starty. I'm just going to keep moving myself. And you can, um, you can, sorry, I might have to stop myself, but you can keep going. And I won't stop the clock. And then once we get down to the lake front, or the water front, um, from what I've heard, it's uh, going to be kind of quiet. All right, so been a while. Didn't do it together in last week. Just couldn't figure it out in Chicago. I've got loads to update you on. Um, but for now, um, I am going to have us get ahead. We'll get going with our body scan and our other usual pieces. Um, and then we'll go into the updates, mental health and all the usual bits we do. So, you know the drill if you've done this before. If not, you just follow my lead. Just paying attention to the areas of your body that I'm calling out. And just be present within your body as best you can. I recognize, as I said, I'm in a major city and there's probably a lot of distracting noises. Apologize about that. Um, but uh, yeah, we're gonna do the best we can. Right. Starting at the top of your head, working your way down, checking with your eyes, making sure they're not scrunched or holding on to any tension as you continue on down, checking in with your nose and mouth. Making your way around to the back of you. Going to protect the back of your head. As you come back around the front to your jaw. Checking that's not clenched either, holding any tension. Continue on down to your neck. To the front of your neck. The back of your neck. Going into your shoulders. As you continue on down through the upper shoulders into the upper arm, going around the elbow, into the forearm and wrist, so you check in with your hand, fingers, coming back to the main part of your torso, going to the chest, and continuing on down into your stomach, So you check in with your lower back into your hips and glutes, 
taking you with all those areas on your way down. Going into the top of your legs, quads, around the back to your hamstrings. You check in with the back of your knee, front of your knee, going into your calf and shin. So you continue on down to your inner ankle and your outer ankle. Following up down to your heel. Checking in with the arch. the top of your foot, the ball of your foot, and finally with your toes. How's everything feeling? Me, I feel pretty good. Just figuring out exactly where I'm going. Senses check in. We're going to check in with our five primary senses just to see what we are taking in, what is going on around us, just to clock into how we are connected to our surroundings, with our surroundings, with our world. Just something I think is really important and that we don't do enough of across the street and then we'll begin. Maybe. Not looking easy for me to cross right now. It's a constant car and the light going the other way is not even, well there we go, 13 seconds that I can cross. but let's just go ahead and do that as best we can. What do you smell? For me, I smell like sanitation. 
kitchen smell. A cleaning smell, like things have been clean recently. Um, where am I going? This is my last light, there we go. All right, now I'm on the waterfront. Okay, so, so I need to leave like nine minutes to get back. What did you smell? Oh my God. Sorry, there's a dog running towards me. <laughs> um, all right, next. What do you taste? Oh my God, this is so beautiful. Wow. Gorgeous. What do you taste? Taste toothpaste. Was that was the last thing I did before I left? Next, we're going to go on to a sense of touch, tactile, which means, yeah, we'll jump into that instead of hearing today. I don't know why, it just feels right. <laughs> which means you are just going to be present in your body, paying attention to why your body is interacting with the world. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. I know I'm not meant to be using my eyes at this moment, but it, it's gorgeous. Uh, where your body is interacting with the world, what you feel in terms of your skin connecting to the world, your tactile sense. So I want you to go ahead now and be present, but remember you may have moments where your, your attention is just drawn in one place, but you may also have moments where it's jumping from place to place. It all depends on you and your body. So let's go ahead and do that now. more seconds. Okay. Where was your attention being drawn? What senses did you feel while you were running? For me... I felt my fingers feeling colder than they have in a while. I felt the warmth under my armpits. I felt my tights against my legs and my feet hitting the, or the soles of my feet hitting the very surfaces I was running on. And I do still feel my heel a little bit. Achilles, but it's no more than a one, so I'm good to keep going. All right, next for you, I'm going to do hearing. If you would like to take your headphones out, you are welcome to do so. If you prefer to keep your headphones in and just listen to my sounds, you are welcome to do that. I'm just about to turn a corner to get around this uh, beaver tails famous pastries to get back to the harbour centre or the lakefront so it should go quiet again if you want to listen to mine but whatever you're doing we're just going to take a little bit of time to be present in our ears listen for sounds and let's go ahead and do that now
few more seconds. Okay. What was it you had in your world or in mine? Me, I hear people shouting. I hear my feet on the wood boards, the boardwalk. I hear head seagulls. Always brings a warm warmness to my heart when I hear seagulls. I hear other birds. I heard a plane coming in and the sound of construction. And finally, I'm going to do a sense of sight, vision, that you to take in the world around you through your eyes. Even if you've already done this run thousands of times, there's still something new you can find around you. And how I want you to do this is by letting your attention in your eyes go where it goes. All I ask, as always, is that you find some detail about something that catches your eye and take it in as if it's the only time you're ever going to see that thing again. So let's go ahead and do that now. Few more seconds. Okay, friends, what did you see? Where was your eyes being drawn? with the detail that you took in from that little chunk of time you're paying attention. For me, it was the clouds over the other side of the waterfront. They're kind of like cotton buds, uh, cotton wool buds, like, um, like the puffs that people clean their faces with. Um, and uh, they were kind of just puffed up down there, but there's no other clouds. It's kind of cool. Looks good. Beyond the tree, and that's the other piece of it, is there's like a row of trees over there, and the clouds are just like little puffs beyond it. Okay, friends. Thanks for checking in with your body and your surroundings. Next, we're going to check in with our heads. We're going to do a mental health check-in. And so with that, I'm going to ask you a question and you're just going to take a few minutes to answer it in your head, yes. But if you want to share afterwards what you were thinking about, I love seeing photos of you on Together Runs. It brings me so much joy. So thank you to those of you who've done that in the last week. I've made sure to check in with you afterwards and say how much I enjoyed it, share it on my social media because it just makes me feel like I'm with you. Um, okay, so you ready? How are you? Really? Let's go ahead and take a few minutes to think about that now.
distracted, gently bring yourself back. How are you, really? Big bleeper. seconds Am I now? How am I really? Oh, I'm a lot of things right now. I am very excited to be here, very honored and grateful to be here. Um, I've never been to Canada, even though I've lived in the US since 2006, and even though I lived in Michigan for five years, right? Went right close to the border, never did. So I'm excited and appreciative of the UCS Toronto Waterfront Marathon for bringing me here um, and for the work that they do. I do feel grateful for that. They're, they're a leader in the space. They are one of the races that put sustainability first. One of the few right now, but growing. Um, I'm also tired, as you can probably tell from my voice. Uh, it's um, in and out right now, which is not ideal when I'm moderating a panel tonight. But it seems to have stuck like this for like four or five days now. So I guess this is my voice currently. And uh, so, yeah, I'm tired. But as you know, probably, I've been doing a lot lately, also juggling too much, and I really did pay the price for it on Sunday. Yes, while I was at Chicago, had a mental health breakdown. <laughs> Not ideal timing. There was friends who had to pick me up off the ground. Steve had a incoherable phone call. And is that a word? You know, like, couldn't make out what I was saying because I was crying. Um, Ali from New York Road Runners was an incredible person for, who could be there for me in that moment. Um, as was Michael Clemens, Chris Mosier. They were both there for me in amazing ways. And many other friends were also there to support me, but I... It just felt like too much, too big. Like, not making any impact, what's the point? Um, and it took me a few days to pull myself out of it. Maybe, if I'm honest, still maybe haven't, totally. Uh, but, you know, I feel better, I do feel. I took a few days where I really didn't do anything. I hung out with Steve spent time with my girls and just kept things chill before I came here, which I needed. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm still kind of coming out the other side of that mentally, but I do feel physically still tired. Uh, and the next month is just a lot. There's absolutely no way now I look back on it that I could have been training well for Havelina during this time. 
it just would have been too much. So, ooh, Toronto Music Garden. So in many ways, my body saved me. Um, because, you know, she knew, maybe the, the Mother Earth knew, that, I, oh, it's a black squirrel, uh, that I couldn't handle it. And so, it would have been too much. And so by pulling me out of it early, and you know, I haven't actually realized that till this point, how much of a blessing this injury has been in that way. Um, I literally, I'm just recognizing it as I'm telling you it, that, wow, like how stressed and exhausted I would have been if I was trying to run, you know, four or five hour runs in between these trips and trying to prep for this race with all that I have work-wise, I just wouldn't have worked. Of course it wouldn't have worked. Um, So I guess I'm grateful to my body for breaking down, um, for giving me an answer so definite that there was no, well, maybe I'll keep trying or, or we'll see what happens. This injury was like a don't you dare because if you do you're going to need a surgery and for someone like me that was you know enough Uh, and also something drastic enough for me to react and respond and have to do something about so I guess I'm also grateful for my injury that has kept me frustratingly at a run every other day for the last six weeks and longer more messed up but damn now I think about this what a blessing in disguise um and beyond that other emotions miss my girls I miss Steve I I do have a guilt of leaving them a lot of fear of how it's going to affect the girls me being gone this much at the moment Um, are they going to come to the conclusion that this matters more than them I mean I work hard when I'm home to show them how much they mean I do think so they do know I'm loved even when I'm not there but still I don't know how this is affecting them and yeah that just weigh in my mind because I just don't know what the long term effects are and finally even though I know my work I've only got 30 seconds 30 minute groups so come to a walk even though I know my work matters is important is changing the narrative so runners can address climate change I really believe in what I'm doing of course there's that guilt of I flew here if I could have taken the train I would I did take the train to Chicago it was five hours instead of one took public transport all while I was there but still even with me knowing what I do still feel it on my shoulders that guilt all right, come to a walk, 30 minute group. We're gonna do two strides in about 30 seconds. Um, I might take my long sleeve off actually in a second. I'm gonna do that while you do the stride because I'm not ready to do a stride yet. Okay, you ready to do a stride? In three, two, and one, go. And come to a jog or a walk. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna do another 
30 seconds or so and then we'll do another one actually you know what at this moment friends I'm about to stop my watch and you should too I'm going to see a photo of you I'll take one of me with my view right now I would love to see you wherever you are it doesn't matter what is behind you how boring it is or ugly it is I want to see you so let's go ahead and stop our watches now all of us and take a picture I'm going to do that too Go ahead and get it out. All right, ready to go again? Three, two, and one. Hope you took a photo. Some destruction going on. All right, we're gonna do another stride. You ready? In three, two, and one. Let's go. Okay. Come to a jog or a walk. 30 minute friends. Thank you so much for joining. May I ask a favor? I'd love to see a photo of you running with me, number one. So two favors. And number two, if you have purchased a copy of Becoming a Sustainable Runner, and this is for everyone, and you haven't left a review, oh, that would help me so much in this quest because the reviews matter. You know this, I know this. We pay attention to reviews. And as of me recording this, we have 19 reviews. And it's just not really enough for most people to who don't know me to make a decision off so if you as running for real listeners you my community my people can help me to get to 30 40 50 that's where people start paying attention that's where amazon starts pushing it that's where it would really start to make a big difference so i'd really really appreciate if you could leave a review on amazon even if you didn't buy it from Amazon, you can still go over there and leave a review. Although, especially if you did buy it on Amazon, that's a massive help because it says verified. All right, 30 minute friends, I'll see you next time for the rest of us. So I'm gonna find my way back to the waterfront. This is kind of one of those, it's like this in Boston by the waterfront where you go like in and out and in and out You're just kind of running to the water and then back and then running to the water and then back to the city so it's kind of zigzaggy but that's okay also wish i'd worn a hat or some sunglasses oh no exit not this one all right friends so next we did our mental health check-in I unloaded some heavy stuff on you. <laughs> and next, I want to hear what you've been up to. If you're a first time together runner, I want you to share or think about what you would share with me if we were running together for the first time. You can also share that on your social media post. If you've run with me many times before, I want you to share with me what you've been up to since we last ran together. What would you tell me? This is also just a time for you to process all that's been going on in your life because you probably have more going on than you think and maybe it's been contributing to some other factors of feeling tired in your runs or feeling a bit sluggish. Uh, whatever is going on with you, probably there's some factors of what you've been doing that you haven't thought about. So, since we last ran together, what have you been up to? Let's go ahead and do that now.
Is it okay if she says hello? distracted keep sharing what you've been up to what's been going on in your world About 30 seconds more Thank you for sharing. I hope that gave you some insight into your world and what's been going on with you. Because sometimes we tend to forget <laughs> what we've been up to. I'm gonna attempt to do the same here. As you likely know, it's a lot. Uh, <laughs> and I'm gonna try and share as best I can. All right, so let's go backwards. I'm in Toronto. Monte Waterfront Marathon would have happened by the time you hear this. I'll be on my way home, cutting as minimal time away from my family as I can. And the few days before that, I just said I just rested. Uh, I had my parents visit for two and a half weeks from when I was in New York all the way up to uh, when I left for Chicago and they took care of my girls for two, week, uh, two days while well, Steve and I were both gone such a nice time having them visit and really enjoyed the trip with them however of course that does add additional layers of time management because I wanted to make the most of the time with them I wanted to take them to explore which I did we did but that meant I couldn't do a lot of my work stuff and so got very behind with things and it was just a little bit stressful in general because this is my book launch period this is the busy period um, and I just couldn't get things to where I could keep up and that's part of where I started to get myself into trouble was like cutting things like sleep to make sure I got my work done. Um, and so that period was a lot of just stuff. Um, Chicago, as I said, Sunday had a bit of a breakdown. It wasn't the race's fault. The team there is amazing. Um, a lot of it was just these students coming in from Europe, sustainability passionate, um, master students, and just kind of watching their spirits get crushed by the state of America and just how far behind it is in terms of like sustainability. Just the simple things, you know, like why are we still using styrofoam? And, uh, you know, and there's a sign put out saying, with paper, sign above the trash can saying paper cups, food scraps, a sign on it. Really hard to miss. People still throwing all kinds of stuff in there. Um, and so watching their spirits, these passionate, 20 passionate, you know, young adults, who, to be honest, I put too much hope into the next generation I put too much on their shoulders that they're going to save us because they can read through the BS but then it just crushed me uh, and I just felt very deflated and disheartened and dejected and all the D words disappointed and so uh, but Chicago did amazing work 
I had two great days at the expo. I met many of you. Uh, it was so nice to have some time to chat to you. All of those of you who bought copies of my book, thank you. That means the world. Uh, it was really great. Um, what's before Chicago? Uh, I was home. With my, uh, yeah, that was it. I was just kind of with my parents and my family. I did a lot of family stuff, which was so nice. Really enjoyed all the things we did. I saw some things around the area that I'd never seen. Really enjoyed. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was a good trip with my parents. And then I think I've... Another dead end. <laughs> one of these days, I think I might have to... One of these points, I think I might have to just, uh, head back on the road. I'm going to run out of time. Um, uh, what was I thinking? Yeah, it was just really nice to have them. And New York, I've recorded a together run since New York, but that was amazing in its own way. Um, and, uh, just good getting some press around this these sustainability efforts uh, so yeah I'm excited for it um, anything else so book has been the primary focus those of you who have purchased a copy I appreciate you so much I know you don't have to do that and I'm so grateful that you did and have and if you've left a review even more amazing thank you um, that's been most of my focus I do have other things that keep coming up, uh, but to be honest, I don't know, or oh, you can probably say this yourself, I don't know how much more I can handle. So I'm trying to get to a place of where I can help these races with their sustainability initiatives without, surprise, surprise, having to travel there, without it having to be me spending four or five days away from my family. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to figure out what the next step looks like of how I can take what I've learned, take all this, these photos and videos I have of these amazing initiatives that the leaders are doing and pass that on to the other races to take lessons from. So, working on it. Um, and then... Yeah, I mean, that's been where most of my time has been. Uh, I've got our amazing brand partners who have been so supportive to me through my injury, uh, especially like precision gels and hydration. Uh, I haven't obviously been using the gels because I have been injured, but I've been still using, and I want to say to you at this point, Remember to keep on top of your electrolytes at this point. As the temperature drops, we as runners get tempted to not take electrolytes because we're like, oh, it's not that hot anymore. But you're still sweating under your long sleeves, right? Still getting hot and that's all gonna add up. So make sure you are on top of your electrolytes, especially this time of year. Um, and precision is my favorite. I actually really love the taste of the, of the tablet, like in water. Like I literally look forward to it because it's like fizzy and like, it's not as salty. It's kind of almost a bit like carbonated water, but a better taste, like a little bit lemon, le uh, like lemonade in terms of like Spritey. Sprite, not lemonade, this in the lemon flavored. Um, I really love it and I look forward to drinking it every day. And Precision have been so patient with me during this time. You know, obviously, I wanted to be racing using the gels. Um, and so, I encourage you if you do need electrolytes, give those Precision Hydration electrolytes a go. There's a 1000 strength or a 1500 strength and a 500. But if you're not sure, how salty of a sweater you are. Remember, they have that. Oh, sorry. 45 minute group come to walk. Um, they have that planner for you to figure out exactly 
the gels you need, the hydration you need, and especially if your race didn't go well over this last period, go do that. It's free. Um, use the link in the show notes to go check out the planner. Use the link in the show notes to get yourself 15% off, or you can use code Tina sent me, and that will give you 15% off as well. But go check it out. And that wasn't planned. I just feel grateful, you know, these brands, they support me, they finance the podcast, allow me to do this right here, what I'm doing with you. And, you know, I'll be honest, we're going to do Australia in just a second. I'll be honest, there's like guilt around that too. And I my favorite word, right? Guilt. Because they've invested in me and I'm injured. And I would be using their gels if I was running more. Or even, like I said, this is my first hour run. And I really would be using their stuff because it's fantastic. I love it. I love the taste. It goes down easy. So, yeah. All right. Ready for a stride? In three, two, and one. Off we go. Off you go. to a jog or a walk we'll do one more in a minute and then 45 minute group you can be on your way I think I'm going to end up missing the last part of the harbour because I've done so many extra zigzags I need to get out to the main line head back which is a shame oh no here it is should be okay Alright, you ready for another stride? In three, two, and one. Go. Come to a jog or a walk. And on that note, what, well, 45 minute group? Just about to share something, so I would encourage you to hang around for that. But um, if you want to head out, that's okay. Uh, Thank you for joining, regardless of when you hop off. And remember, if you could support me with the book, I'd really appreciate that. And seeing your faces. Um, my news is, so I, you knew I was doing New York. I think I've said that many times. With Kaylee Williamson, who I ran Boston with. My friend with Down syndrome. Um, and my sports rehab PT guy gave me the okay that I can do the whole thing if I keep my um, running right now to every other day no more than an hour so I've kind of playing with fire a little bit um, but I really this is really important to Kaylee for me to be there and I want to be there for her and they could have dropped out halfway but then New York Road Runners was concerned if I drop out as a guide and then I jump back in at the finish. People think I was trying to cheat. <laughs> Why I would cheat to run a eight hour marathon, I don't know. But they were very concerned about that. And so, yeah, we just had to, so I had to make a decision. And uh, the caveat is, if it hurts at all, I have to drop out. And Kaylee and Sandy, her mum, know that. Um, and so obviously it was a bit of a risk. But um, for all of us. But we felt that it was worth it. And yeah, we wanted to, to try. So I'm going to be doing New York. On that note, I will be doing a plugging event the day before from New York Road Runners. So I hope... I will see you there. Um, we did it last year. It was amazing. Plogging is picking up trash while jogging. It was such a powerful thing. The CEO of New York Road Runners came and did it with us. Um, it was really cool. Um, and so... Yeah, kind of 10 years of some good, some great. Some I'm just trying to figure out my bearings here. And so... Uh, Yes, New York, I'd love to see you there. 
Um, and I will also be at CIM. So if you'll be there, I'd love to see you. I might be running much still at that point, hopefully building up a little bit by then. Um, but I'd love to see you if you're gonna be there. So just to keep that in mind. All right, 45 minute group, I'm assuming you've either gone or are going. And for the rest of us, we'll do another set of strides in about seven minutes. But for now, I want you to go ahead and do a body, body scan at your own time. Just checking in with your body. Do it your own pace. Let's go ahead and do that now. To be headed up. You may have to stop for a second. I'm just yeah, alright friends, I'm just gonna stop and look where I am. Um, tell you what, I'm going to keep going but if it starts getting too tricky going up these main streets I'm just going to say bye bye and you can finish your run on your own um, yes, yeah, so this is the street I want to run up I'll save it quickly alright the tricky part about I landed here last night and so literally had no understanding of <laughs> the city or where it was or anything going into this moment so it was just a bit this is figuring it out as I go and there's a lot of construction going on in the city <laughs> so we had a so a lot of things closed and not closed and Okay. Alrighty, friends. I don't know what else I have to share, really. I guess I just appreciate you, all of those of you who have sent me feedback after my post last week about Chicago, my frustration in the system, and just people not being given the best opportunity to make the right choices, as well as us just being so brainwashed with this disposable lifestyle that I understand it can be hard to make choices that are like better than for the environment because we're just not set up to be able to do that. And so it makes us feel bad. 
And that's what those in power want. They want the blame shifted onto us so that we feel like it's our fault, not theirs. When, you know, if you ask for something, like you say, can I have a sandwich, please? Well, let's say you say, can I have a cake, a cupcake? That's a good example. Can I have a cupcake? Um, the cupcake comes with a little wrapper around it, right? A little papery, maybe you've got some wax in there, wrapper. And then they put it in the plastic tub. You didn't ask for the plastic tub, but you were given it. Is that your fault? No. Is that the restaurant's fault? Uh, kind of, but kind of not. They, you know, the, the paper versions might be a lot more expensive, might require a lot more resources. Is it the plastics industry? Yeah, a big chunk of it is. They want, they make their stuff as cheap as possible because they know then they get people to be like, well, i got to save my business, so I'm going to pick that option. And they do a lot of bullying at the systemic level to make their stuff cheaper, to bypass various taxes and fees. So they can make it a lot cheaper than everything else. And so this is the tough part here, is there's so much manipulation tangled into everything that it's not easy for us to make choices. It's overwhelming for us to try and make the right choice. And so give yourself compassion with that. But also, when you see efforts like what I'm doing or others are doing to change things, to speak up, recognize what we're going against, and help. Tell us, okay, what about if you tried this? Or yeah, make a suggestion as to what something you think might work better. Or have you ever thought about doing this? So the more you can help us, there's a good chance we maybe haven't thought of the suggestion that you have. And that would be a more effective way of getting the message out. So please share when you have things that come to mind. All right, you ready for a stride? Three, two, and one. Go. Come to a jog or a walk. Or jog for you, actually. Don't need a walk. Take another 30 seconds and we'll do one more. Just uh, paying attention, there's definitely a lot of people going to work. <laughs> might be challenging for me right now. <laughs> but if not, you can always use your feet on the ground, recognizing that the earth is underneath all these man-made layers of everything. Okay, come to a walk, if you can find yourself some element of nature, connecting with that right now. If you can't, like, I can't see anything. Just recognize your feet on the ground. Feel your feet walking across the earth. Know that even if you are on meters of thick human-made surfaces, the earth is still under there. She's still breathing underneath. Thank you, friends, for joining me. See you next time.